Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. Hope you're having a great Friday. Hope your week has been enjoyable. My wife and I have been spending the last few days just kind of uh, spending time around Pretoria and South Africa, kind of enjoying our last few moments here. My wife leaves in less than a week with our youngest son to go get him treatment that side in the United States. I'll be following in a few weeks after that, uh, but things are hectic. And so if there's a few pieces of news in this episode that you've already heard elsewhere, well, that's just because we're trying to catch up friends, okay? But you know what? you need to catch up on is today's video sponsor, privacy.com. My friends, if you are looking to stay safe on the internet, privacy.com is the way to do it because they make sure that your card is protected because you don't want to use the same password at every single website where you're storing your data. You don't want to do that with your card either. And that's where privacy.com comes in to give you a card that can be set per merchant and also has limits such as a one-time use limit or monthly limit limits for a recurring thing like your Spotify subscription. It gives you a card number that's dedicated to that. It keeps you safe and you'll know in the event of a cybersecurity issue when your card number has been compromised, likely before the company even informs you of it because you'll see that they tried to charge your account, but it got denied because you were set up with privacy. So if you go to privacy.com forward slash UFD, you'll actually get $5 off your first purchase with them. Five free dollars for using the link in the video description. And that actually ties well into a promotion that's currently going on for our merch, which is if you use the coupon code PMKINS for this week and only, you'll get 10% off of our merch. You use that five free dollars from privacy. Our merch is heavily discounted. Five free dollars from privacy. PMKINS as the coupon code. You can pick up a hot floppy tee. Reese, come show the press F to pay respects. Look at how gorgeous our merch is. Use privacy.com to protect your card and then use the coupon code down below to make sure that you're saving money on the merch. Okay, that's enough of the sponsor spots. Let's go ahead and talk about the hot news, which is a ton of AMD news that has come out. Some of it from Sony, some of it from MSI, some of it from AMD themselves. And the biggest news that has dropped is the Sony next generation console has a bit more details thanks to Mark Cerny of Sony having an interview with Wired yet again. You may remember that he did this a few months back to let us know what we can expect going forward with the next generation PlayStation, which is now officially PlayStation 5. No code names, no nothing besides just PS5, that's what we were all expecting. It's going to have a next generation SSD, which helps games to load significantly faster, but it's still going to feature an optical drive with the disks that go into it being up to 100 gigabytes. But how it's gonna store that on the drive, which will require installation, is going to be different than the PS4 because of how much faster the SSD technology is going to be than the optical drives that they're currently using. And then that's on top of the eight core 16 thread Zen 2 CPU that's been confirmed and the Navi graphics card that's going to be on the SOC for the console. And one of the things that Mark Cerny confirmed in the interview is that it is going to have hardware accelerated ray tracing, which is something that was long speculated. He mentioned that ray tracing was going to be coming to the next generation of consoles, but it was unknown whether it was going to be software based, which requires a lot more physical computation or dedicated hardware based ray tracing, which is still hardware intensive, but it's dedicated to something that isn't currently doing something else. So that is a big announcement, something that AMD themselves have not even confirmed as of yet. Lisa Su not mentioning whether or not there's going to be hardware accelerated ray tracing on any AMD GPUs going forward. So this is actually quite a big deal. Sony saying something about AMD's technology that AMD hasn't said themselves. And then there's also the release date of holiday 2020, presumably probably in the November timeframe so that they can get in before the Black Friday crowd and make sure that they're getting all of the holiday sales that they need and would give them some breathing room for the last remaining PlayStation 4 titles that are coming out, such as the Final Fantasy VII Remake, as well as other games such as Cyberpunk to let those have a six month breathing room of when they're released until the next generation console drops. But hopefully they're gonna stay true to their uh, promises of backwards compatibility so that those games can still play on the PlayStation 5 and might even load tremendously faster. So maybe now's the time to sell your PlayStation. Maybe it's next year, but all I know is I'm super excited for Cyberpunk. I'm super excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake. And now I'm even more excited for the PlayStation 5. 
But let's go ahead and talk about ray tracing with AMD on desktops because, I mean, nobody can be allowed to admit that consoles are better than a gaming PC. Well, it appears that in AMD's own drivers, there has been support for ray tracing since July of this year. This is coming after PC Games and did a deep dive into the driver code and found that, yes, there is indeed support for ray tracing. Obviously, with the Navi cards that have come out, the 5700, the 5700 XT, as well as the 5500, none of them have hardware accelerated ray tracing. So it remains to be seen how this is going to be implemented. Maybe potentially it's going to be software based for Microsoft DXR implementations, or it's just for them to have in the code for reasons. Well, they better have a good reason for what they're about to do with their Zen 3 line of CPUs, which is supposed to be launching next year. Codename Milan, there's actually a released slide from Mark Papermaster, the CTO of AMD, showing that they're actually gonna be changing how the core complexes work in the architectural design of the Zen process. It's actually something that was published on the internet and then is now deleted, but it seems to indicate that there's gonna be different ways that it shares L3 cache between the cores, which would allow AMD to change how the core complex structure is arranged and could be a fundamental difference between the CPUs that have been released, the Ryzen 3700X, and then what would be the Ryzen 4700X. They might actually have completely different designs and have to be addressed in different ways in operating systems. But that is for future CPUs. Let's talk about CPUs that should be hitting store shelves next month, which is the Ryzen 9 3950X. There's some indication out on the internet showing that the 16 core 32 thread processor can hit 4.3 gigahertz on basic liquid cooling, which would be quite phenomenal if true. However, there's also claims by Intel that their 10D980XE can hit 5.1 gigahertz on regular water cooling with no chillers. And I find that to be a load of bull crap because there's no process chains between the 9980XE and the 10D980XE. So we'll see if that's actually true. It's a, it's a lot to take in and believe. Obviously with AMD, they have the seven nanometer process. It's more efficient. Intel has literally changed nothing in five years. But other 3950X news is that ASRock, their A320 board, actually has support in the BIOS for the 16 core chip. So if you wanna have the world's most unbalanced Motherboard and CPU, this is the way to do it, my friends, A320 ASRock. But AMD is not only just relegated to rumors, they've also announced some CPUs themselves, the Ryzen 9 3900 and the Ryzen 5 3500X. The 3900 is a 65 watt TDP chip, 12 cores, 24 threads. The 3500X does not have simultaneous multi-threading. It is simply just a six core, six thread chip. Their purpose is a little ambiguous at the moment. Presumably they're gonna be going to system Integrators are not really relevant to the desktop market because the pricing structure just wouldn't make sense. Why would you get a 3500X when you could just get a 3600 for two hundred dollars, it, it just get the, just get the simultaneous multi-threading, friends. And then on top of that, Corsair has announced that they are going to be shipping the world's first retail five gigahertz DDR4 RAM. It's going to be compatible with AMD. Why you need five gigahertz? I'm not sure, but it's there if you want it. And it's just like that that G Skill also dropped an announcement because Corsair can't have all of the fun that they have now. Got thirty-two gigabyte DIMM sticks for their Trident Z Royal RAM, so that you can have up to two hundred fifty-six gigabytes on the high-end desktop platforms, 128 on standard AIM4 chip stuff. So that's that's a lot of RAM. I bet you could download more though. I, I, Reese, can you, can you download some RAM to me please? And more AMD news. The AMD TRX40 chipset, which is supposed to be the next generation Threadripper motherboards, has been leaked by MSI and then silently pulled on a promotion page where they're giving away a $25 Steam gift card for whenever you buy one of their products. Well, the creator TRX40 was listed on that website as being one of the motherboards that qualify for the promotion. Obviously, this hasn't even been announced by AMD, so the fact that MSI has even leaked it, it means they're they're in, you know, freaking 2020 already they're they're ahead of the game and presumably also in hot water with amd for for leaking something that they probably shouldn't have but then let's get back into it's, it's kind of relevant to amd but it's the sony p playstation 5 the psvr 2 has been found out to have a patent that potentially would make it wireless as well as giving it augmented reality potential with the front facing cameras on it so that it can mix real world with fake worlds instead of just being completely fake world which might be the way that it needs to go but at the same time, 
It's, it's going to be locked down to your console that's powering it. We'll see. It's, it's, uh, VR is in a tricky place, my friends, but wireless is definitely the way to go as long as they can keep latency under control. And then let's transition over into some Intel news because Intel has decided that they're freaking done with the seventh gen series of CPUs. So my friends, if you want to pick up a 7700K for some stupid reason, now's your time until April 2020 is when they're going to be allowing uh, discontinuation orders to come in for these chips. Really doesn't make sense. The 77 or the seventh gen series of processors has been obsolete since October of 2017 when the Intel was just like, oh, hey, let's release a series in January. Ah, crap, rise and launch. Let's release something in October. Not even nine months of the seventh gen being out. I'm surprised it hasn't been discontinued already because it's just, it's dumb. It, it became dumb in just like six months. But what wasn't dumb was Intel and AMD pairing up to make KB Lake G processors, which is where AMD was using their Vega graphics with Intel CPUs. And it was a great harmonious time in the PC gaming industry. They never really sold anywhere, presumably because of the GeForce partner program. It was a whole weird time back in 2018, but that has been discontinued as well. AMD, Intel, no longer buddies. And then just a quick rumor on NVIDIA, their next generation architecture known as Ampere is being rumored to launch in the first half of 2020. This is coming from Igor's lab. Uh, cool, more, inf I mean, if we could just go back to videos that we made in January of 2018 here on UFD Tech, uh, Turing was supposed to be called Ampere. So rumors about this stuff fly all over the place and we don't have enough information to actually confirm whether or not it's true. But you know what Google is saying is true? That your gameplay on Google Stadia is gonna be way better than on your console, which makes sense because consoles are crappy, but it's also gonna be better than a gaming PC. What? Yes, and that's gonna be due to a feature that they call negative latency, which combines a whole host of things. One is that they are going to have high refresh rate, high frame rate gameplay, such as like when CSGO players like to play at over 300 FPS on 60 Hertz monitors because it helps to reduce input latency, even if you can't see the physical difference. And then it would use machine learning to try to anticipate where you're gonna to try to move in the game and then do it for you before you've done it and somehow play the game for you, but not really, it's not that, like, it's a super complicated thing. And then also somehow use technology to make sure that your button presses happen way before they actually do. It's a, it's a whole bunch of stuff that Google's on, but negative latency is now a thing. And as of this Saturday, 4K live streaming of football games is now a thing on ESPN. This is going to be happening with DirecTV and the inaugural game is none other than the LSU Tigers versus the Florida Gators. Go Gator! But it is clear that the Gators are superb to any other schools with the conferences that we play in. One, two, three, four, five. Then the Gator don't take no jive. This is also going to happen with the BCS National Championship that's going to be taking place on January 13th. But the Gators, who are still undefeated, got a big game coming up against LSU. It's going to be the first ever inaugural uh, 4K live stream football game. I'm excited for it, even though I'm in South Africa and I'm not going to be able to watch it and that's going to suck. You know what doesn't suck though is today's video sponsor, which is privacy.com. Check them out. The link in the video description, privacy.com forward slash UFD to save $5 off your first purchase with them and stay safe shopping on the internet. And with shopping, we'd recommend that you check out our merch, which is down in the video description, the coupon code PMKINS, which will allow you to get a 10% off of our merch. This is actually a Teespring campaign where we actually are still getting the full amount and their discount and get 10%. So big thanks to Teespring for doing that. But you can check out the hot floppy. You got the press F to pay respects. You got the tech gator. You also have the Mobo diamond. All of them great designs. All of them helping us to move overseas to the United States in the next couple of months uh, just to make sure that UFT tech can survive. So thank you to Prophecy. Thank you to Teespring. Thank you to you guys. Thank you to AMD for having a ton of news today. And I'm going to thank myself out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Reese, can you can you download some RAM to me, please? Honk it. Honk, honk it.
Chonk, chonk. Chonk, chonk. Chonk, chonk.